The patrons have spoken once again, so this time we have Slowking. This royal Pokemon first captured fans' hearts with its appearance in Pokemon the Movie 2000, which is one of the better Pokemon movies, where it famously guided Ash and more famously wished for some pants. But as always, we want to know how it did competitively. So, how good was Slowking actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Slow King unfortunately didn't occupy any sort of usable niche within Overuse in its debut generation. It had no traits that made it worth using over amazing competition like Suicune, Vaporeon, and Starmie. However, it was absolutely top tier in Underused alongside Slowbro. The two were even semi-interchangeable, but they were also so strong that sometimes they were both used on the same team and it would work out well, so long as their teammates could handle specific threats like Scyther and Electabuzz. They were terrific because with a simple set of Surf, Psychic, and Rest Talk, they were excellent on both offense and defense, with both being able to stall the incredibly dangerous Hypno, as well as opposing variants of each other to allow a frailer teammate like Scyther to get in safely, rather than take repeated uncontested blows. Slow King in particular was also tremendous at warding off the tier's most dangerous Pokemon, Needle Queen, since it took Earthquakes well and was not too afraid of Thunder. Plus, it was guaranteed to get an effective Sleep Talk against Needle Queen. Overall, Slow King was quite a defining Pokemon in GSC UU and reigned over much of the tier, which clearly had a royalty theme. Slow King was once again ineffective in OU in Gen 3. Its longevity was crippled by multiple spikes and permanent sand. Throw in an inability to damage many common walls in the metagame, being damaged heavily by just about every top offensive threat, and top it off with tremendous water type competition. Thus, Slow King is nowhere to be seen in OU. In UU, though, it was quite decent. Slowbro was too powerful for the more physically offensive tier and thus sat in borderline, unable to get in the way. Slow King's access to Flamethrower was excellent for both grass types and Shedinja. Its main threat was that of Calm Mind, which made it considerably difficult to power through on the special side. But of course, Yu Yu was not lacking in strong Shadow Balls and super effective hidden powers, to say nothing of choice bands and explosions. But Pokemon carrying these often did not appreciate Slow King's strong surf. Think Kangaskhan, Scyther, and Golem. Being able to handle Lunatone was also highly appreciated. So overall, Slow King was not an advanced Yu Yu superstar, but it was a fine Pokemon and a good consideration for most teams. Things were tougher than ever for Slow King in Diamond and Pearl OU. Tyranitar's special defense boost alongside Physical Pursuit was just killer. Not to mention U-Turn being ubiquitous, and Scizor had both of those things. And just like the previous generation, Slow King had lots of walls, lots of threats, and lots of better competition. So unfortunately, technically it dropped to never used, but that's a bit misleading because it was an absolutely excellent UU Pokemon. Slowbro of course had to do with this, since it had the more entrenched role of being one of the UU teams truest physical walls capable of staving off monsters like Rhyperior while standing tough in the face of pursuit. Slow King, on the other hand, was far more of an offensive threat. It received Nasty Plot in the fourth generation and as such posed an incredible threat to stall. Since it only really truly needed its stabs, it could run Trick Room alongside it and completely flip the script on the fastest offensive team. It was still bulky enough to handle a pursuit if it really needed to and its extra special defense was absolutely enormous in helping tank the per perpetually threatening Moltres, as well as even a Shadow Ball from Miss Magius or a Rotom Thunderbolt in a pinch, which was just game-breaking. Overall, it was an underappreciated Pokemon in UU, but any experienced player in the tier knew just how threatening it could be. And in NU, it was one of the best Pokemon. If it could handle Moltres, it could definitely handle Charizard, and it was able to tank most Pokemon in this weakest of tiers and hit back really hard, being able to clean teams solidly or just open holes thanks to the lack of great responses. And for Gen 4 VGC, we actually do have some VGC 2009 information. Now, Slow King's niche wasn't clearly defined, but it did manage to reach the finals on a team piloted by a player named Vash in the seniors division of the Philadelphia Regionals, making use of its trick room capabilities, which seemed the most natural fit for Slow King. However, then at Worlds, Grace Beck reached fourth with it on what looks like a hail team, but her Slow King set consisted of Life Orb with Surf, Protect, Flamethrower, and Blizzard. So Grace didn't use trick room, but it still made it that far and it was nice for Slow King to see some action on the big stage. 
Slow King started off Generation 5 as the face of Ryu. It gained the absolutely incredible ability Regenerator, adding to its walling capabilities by making it stupendously difficult to take down even after a hit or two. It also became a tremendous pivot, able to scout the opponent's attacks even with Stealth Rock Up, which would otherwise add up quickly and overwhelm it. It had to watch out for Escavalier's pursuit, but then Escavalier had to watch out for Slow King's fire moves, or for that matter, a burn from Slow King's replacement for Surf, as its water stat, Scald, which is amazing at crippling just about the entire tier, even through a resistance, and thus making it extremely spammable, easy to use, and having almost zero drawback with a potentially huge upside. Regenerator providing passive healing meant Slow King could experiment a little with its move slot. There's nothing like a choice specs user that can shrug hits off just by switching. The fact that such a bulky Pokemon, most noted for its walling capabilities, could and did viably run specs, spoke to how effective it was, and this variety extended to other sets. Slow King really could do anything, from Thunder Wave, Spread for a slow wall breaking teammate, to trick room sweeping, to a dedicated nasty plot variant, to combining the two, to just an all out attacker with unparalleled coverage. It was so good that it was said that opposing Slow King was the only safe counter, and considering how a ride that can go depending on the sets, that speaks to how powerful Slow King was. Especially since when it ran toxic, its biggest target was, well, itself. It was without a doubt the defining rarely used Pokemon for a long time, until Regenerator Alomomola came along. With Wish and Lacking the often severe weaknesses the psychic type possesses, Alomomola's lack of offense was made up for by its completely dominating defensive presence. It was so strong that even the mighty Slow King had its usage fall. However, although it wasn't the omnipotent, omnipresent presence it was prior, it remained a solid choice in the metagame, providing an offensive alternative to the admittedly lacking Big Fish. Conversely, Slow King popped up in Black and White 2 OU because Keldeo was running rampant and any method to slow it down was considered. Slow Bro, who had a place in the tier, thanks to its ability to stave off dangerous physical attackers like Garchomp and Terrakion, couldn't stand up to the sheer force of Hydro Pump, especially in rain. Slow King, on the other hand, took it easily and didn't much mind for Keldeo's occasional super effective hidden powers either, while being able to slack off on Latios's Draco Meteor and not being set up fodder for Skarmory and Ferrothorn, which were the spikers that dominated the tier, thanks to Slow King's strong Fire Blast. Now, it did have to watch out for Tyranitar's pursuit, but with how most Tyranitar were support sets, Slow King could shrug off in a pinch, and Tyranitar of course wouldn't want to walk into a skull, which let Slow King cause havoc against anything short of Reuniclus, whose Calm Mind sets, by the by, were checked nicely by Nasty Plot or Dragon Tail variants of Slow King. Even something like Specially Defensive Rotom Wash was highly annoyed by Slow King, who harassed it with Skull and a deceptively powerful Psy Shock, while shrugging off burns and a weak Volt Switch with its great Special Defense, Slack Off, and Regenerator. This Psy Shock was also crucial for Tentacruel. Slow King was really a tremendous this pain for rain teams to kill, and Slow King remains a solid choice for many sand teams, enabling the big guns to function with it in the rear as a fallback, and has seen great success at the highest level. In VGC, Slow King's ability to stand up to rain and access to Trick Room did give it a small niche, but its only placement that we found, and I apologize if I butcher your name, was Rushan Shikar, aka Firestorm, who used a Wakan Berry variant with Trick Room, Stabs, and Flamethrower to reach top 8 at the US Nationals. Now other than that, Slow King didn't really appear very much of anywhere, but we'll take it. Slow King had a few stints in OU in Gen 6, with Keldeo being bigger than ever and the new Assault Vest combining beautifully with Regenerator, making it an even sturdier tank against Mega Charizard Y and Landorus Incarnate before it was banned. However, it wasn't perfect against these latter two, since Charizard's Solar Beam still pounded it and Lando often ran knockoff. Landorus Incarnate's eventual ban helped relieve some pressure, but Pursuit's prominence persisted, with Weavile now joining the fray and Scald was no longer as spammable with Clefable ruling the tier. Unfortunately, Slow Bro was overall the better choice for its ability to handle Pursuit and physical attackers like Mega Metagross and Mega Metacham, as well as the perpetually annoying Gliscor. Slow Bro made for a better all-purpose tank, as well as for a better Calm Mind Sweeper, and of course, as very viably going Mega, which handled Knockoff too, despite requiring a backup Keldeo check, but this wasn't too hard to do. Thus, Slow King found itself in RU once more. There, it often used Culberberry, which happened a ton against Knockoff, since the subsequent 
subsequent hit would be far weaker, and of course, gave it even more recourse against Pursuit. This allowed it to freely play with its usual bag of tricks, going more offensive or defensive depending on its team. Bulky offense and balance teams also greatly appreciated Assault Vest variants, which allowed Slow King to provide a much needed defensive backbone against threats like Meloetta without giving up offensive pressure. It especially made incredible use of a buffed Future Sight, which had impeccable offensive synergy that set teammates up beautifully for an unavoidable smack. No Dark type would want to eat a stab fighting move. Overall, it was a consistent Pokemon that brought defensive integrity to teams that needed it without sacrificing offense. Now in Gen 6 VGC, Slow King didn't really have a discernible niche, and admittedly we didn't find much information about what its users preferred on it, besides most likely using Trick Room with its stabs, and also its ability Oblivious, which now has the benefits of being unaffected by Taunt. But Slow King overall seems to be quite a decent Pokemon, with a good blend of stats, typing, and move pull, which is probably why it saw sporadic usage despite the generally superior competition. Its 2014 placements included, and I apologize if I butcher your names, Justin Biller reaching 32nd at the Long Beach Regionals, Emilio Orozco reaching 16th at the Seattle Regionals, someone named Chris reaching 4th at the Perth Regionals in the Seniors Division, Carpenter 129 reaching 2nd at the Brisbane Regionals in the Seniors Division, and Neil Kralin reaching top 16 at the UK Nationals as well as a 53rd at Worlds. Ryan Tan also used it to reach top 8 in the Last Chance Qualifier. Then in 2015, Firestorm used it again to reach 3rd at Oregon Regionals. Also, Ken Wright did well with it at the Missouri Regionals. So overall, Slow King was pretty small in the grand scheme of things in Gen 6 VGC, but once again, we take those. Generation 7 saw Slow King drop further to NU, where it fit in just fine after regular Slowbro, who was previously one of the definitive Pokemon in the tier, left for RU. Slow King's old Assault Vest set was just as effective in tanking big threats while remaining healthy as before, staving off powerhouses like Magmortar and even Heliolisk. Despite burn damage being nerfed to merely nullifying leftovers, this could still be huge, and alongside its fire and psychic coverage meant that common grass types of the tier, such as Delmize, Ferrisseed, and Vio plume were not safe switch-ins. Now I did have to be wary of the high power level that came with potentially game-breaking Z-moves, and while the king of the tier Incineroar wouldn't want to switch into a Scald, Incineroar's vicious stab knockoff threat allowed for easy U-turns, and this could have a snowball effect, especially in conjunction with Stealth Rock. Overall, Slow King hasn't quite lived up to Slow Bro's immense pull on the tier, thanks to the general preference for physical defense in the face of U-turns, knockoffs, and pursuits, but it still provides a unique blend that Slow Bro couldn't quite match. The idea of even a Salt Vest Bro squaring off against the insanely threatening Magmortar is laughable. For Gen 7 VGC, Slow King was more a product of its generally overall solid stats, typing, and move pull that was unlikely to go wrong, or at least too wrong, rather than having a specific niche. But in VGC 2017 in particular, Slow King was once again used as a trick room setter, and even sometimes used with Gastrodon as a decent team combination for big damage and trick room. The main thing about Slug King, as Slow King would have Surf instead of Scald, and after a trick room is up, Slow King would use Surf to damage both opposing Pokemon's teams and to power up. Gastrodon's Storm Drain, and then Gastrodon, who's also slow, would go to town with either Muddy Water and sometimes even a Waterium Z move. But other than that, there was also the combination of Trick Room and Heal Pulse, which made Slow King a pretty good, if generally underutilized, partner for the mighty Snorlax. Now, its weakness to many of the metagame's top threats, like the Tapus, Kartana, Zerkatree, and more, held it back, but it did have its moments. Its placements include Bennett Piercy reaching 8th at Oregon Regionals, Justin Karras reaching 27th, and Joseph Selmer reaching 26th at the North American internationals. But its most shining moment was River Davis coming in at first at the Vancouver Regionals, using a Rindleberry and Flamethrower to help deal with the Kartana threat for his Snorlax. Marcus Statter, aka 13 Yoshi 37, also used it to reach 28th at Worlds, and his team didn't even have Snorlax. His primary Trick Room beneficiary was Lightning Rod Alolan Marowak, an incredibly powerful sweeper which worked tremendously well to stave off the grass and electro types that would scare Slow King. So yeah, overall Slow King was decent in 2017 VGC. And that's it, so how good was Slow King actually? Well, in its early days, it's often compared with its counterpart Slowbro, who has generally been more successful, but at the very least, Slow King didn't merely live in its shadow, as Slowbro could only dream of doing some of the things King did, even if the more royal of the two was less splashable and more niche. It ranged from iconic to generally solid in its lifelong lower tier career, with occasional OU appearances and even one legitimate niche, despite being held back by presence of huge moves like knockoff, U-turn, and pursuit. 
In VGC, it's not amazing, and neither is Slowbro, but it's pretty decent. And Slow King has even won a regionals. Overall, Slow King wasn't a superstar, but it was a solid overall Pokemon that would rarely steer you wrong with its combination of excellent, unique traits, and as such, it reigned over the lower tiers. And now I think it deserves some pants. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And for the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Slow King? Would you ever want it to surpass Slowbro in any way? How would you improve it to make it usable over Slowbro? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. You can vote for next week's Pokemon by making a comment in the latest post in the community tab of this channel, which should go up around the same time as this video's release. And of course, thank you to the patrons for continued support of our videos and for voting for Slow King. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.